All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to American Truck Simulator. Um, a little bit about my background into simulation type games. I used to play a lot of. Uh, give me one second. Let me turn. Turn this off for a minute. I played a lot of 18 Wheels of Steel Long Haul. So basically, this is a like a beginner's guide for levels one through, but basically one through five. And this is going to be part one through this. As you see, I'm level three right now because I started a new profile and stuff. Let's load into the game. And I'm going to explain a couple things for somebody that's just trying to get into truck simulators and or is, is wanting to know a little bit more about these type of games. Basically, there is a tutorial with this game. And if you are a beginner, I suggest that you do it. If you're a novice, you can skip it. Basically, the main thing on this is going to be for the first five levels is certain skills and doing quick jobs. Basically, what you want to do up to level five is try to get as much money as you can before you have to take out a loan. You know, you kind of like want one of these two right here, preferably. You don't want a fifty or a hundred thousand dollar loan, so you can buy your first truck at level five, which will get you into the more lucrative job markets. So, going over to skill tree, basically the first three levels, you want a point in fuel economy. Because you do save 10%. I have ran into some occasions in a quick job where I'm like on a 400 mile long haul. And they give me like a half a tank of gas. So if I don't have this fuel economy clicked, I have to stop for gas and spend my own money. Which then puts you behind the eight ball of buying a truck, and then you would have to go for more of the four hundred thousand dollar option, depending on what freight you take. So basically, I would say your very first level put in fuel economy. Levels two and three, you want to put into the long distance. You want to get up to at least. Deliveries up towards 650 miles. Level 5, at this point, you kind of want to put a point in the high-value cargo. Just because these job types are a little bit more lucrative. And then in the 5th, you want to put your first explosive. In your hazmat transporting. You want to be able to transport explosives. Going into. The world map. And you do have start off points. Here I start off in Seattle on this profile. Normally, my main profile is I start off here in Vegas. And the main reason why I start off primarily in Vegas is because I can normally get loads going back towards the east, towards Albuquerque, Flagstaff, Phoenix, and get some, you know, a little bit more lucrative jobs out of there. If you are a beginner, 
I would say I believe there is a garage. Let me see. Yeah, there is a garage in San Fran. I would actually start in San Francisco. And the main reason being is if we go back to this, well, why did it turn off all my. Uh -huh. Okay, so it just turned off all my uh, cities. That's That's awesome. There we go. If you start off in San Francisco, you can have multiple little quick runs and get much, much more money built up because you'll get a run out of San Francisco to, like, let's say, Oakland for your level one. I believe level one, the very first job you take is at random, depending on what city you take. So a lot of mine out of Vegas, when I do start this, goes down to Prim or Kingman. So if you're in San Francisco, you basically have like six to seven options just right here for a first low cargo. And that can vary your money output of your first one anywhere between, I think it's like $1,500 to $2,500. At least that's what I got out of the Vegas, out of my Vegas starts and stuff. And I know this start out of Seattle, I had like a $2,000 start point, which was rare. But for beginners, I suggest that you start in San Francisco because of this reason. You have seven, seven to eight different destinations that you can go to. For your very first job. And then that takes us into the job market. At this point in time, you will not have your own truck. So if we go into the quick job, basically what most people will try to look at with the quick job is the total price. You want to make the most money that you can. Here's the thing. Because you do not know what the fuel level like is on some of these trucks. I, like I said, I've gotten some jobs where I've gotten a half a tank of fuel. You know. So but let's take this top one. Because this is what most beginners are going to do. Oh, hey, this is the most money. This is what I'm going to go for. It's $33 to the mile. It's 368 miles. It's an almost seven and a half hour drive in game time, which at this price, um, I would like it to be a little bit more for my time. You know, if it was like maybe like 12, 12, six, 12, seven, yeah, I would hop on this one in a heartbeat, but as you see, I'm kind of thinking about it because the one right below it, it's at eleven. Even though it's at eleven thousand three hundred seventy-five dollar payout, I'm getting paid thirty-six dollars to the mile for two, almost about an hour, two hours less, and it's only a three hundred mile drive. Compared to having the extra 68 or 65 and the extra two hour and a half, two hours. So I would technically take this load right here. This will be my next quick job. Basically what you want to do, you want the most amount of money, the most per mile for time traveled and the distance as you see here there's even another one below it that's at $33 a mile same as the top one for 11 for about $1000 less we go and look at this okay it's 330 miles for 
about a six hour drive. Okay. But this is the thing. It's going from Tacoma over into Cordillon, Idaho. I'm probably butchered that the hell and back. Cordillane. I am so sorry. <sighs> but as you see here, this is 368. It's 3.30 to the Iowa border, the Idaho border. So, even this one is pretty lucrative. I don't know why this is an extra hour and 15 and an extra 30 miles, 38 miles. You know, versus this one. I I don't understand the logic. You know, of why anybody would take that 12,000 versus the 11 the 11,000, even though it's a frack tank, which is probably one of the most, for a beginner, it's going to be one of the most difficult trailers to move because they sit so low on the back end. And if you do not know how to drive that well in these games yet, and you're using, I'm going to be openly honest, if you're using mouse and keyboard, a frack trailer is going to give you a very hard time. And the thing is, is that you're going to lose experience points doing a beginner frack. Because the frack tank trailers tend to be very hard to maneuver into a lot of these parking spaces that are designed in the game. And yeah, you can play it safe and get the plus 15 experience. You can do that. Yes. The thing is, is that if you're not familiar with some of these stops, and especially in the Pacific Northwest, then you are actually even going to struggle with trying to park the trailer in the safe spot. To an extent. It's going to take you a little bit more time. So if you are a very beginner to this game. I will stay away from the frack tanks. As much as possible. If you are a novice. You can play with the. You can play around with the frack tanks in the beginning. And see what it is to, to haul them. Now, if we go down to this one at 10,000, I'm just basically, I'm basically going off of these right here because sometimes, I mean, you notice how many pages there are, but there are some gems that are like little quick rides, like from Tacoma to Yakima or up here to Everett. Even I have one to Vancouver, Washington that it paid out less overall, but I got more per the mile. So that's telling me that this load is actually a little bit more worth my time to do because I can get on and off of the job in relative quickness. So if I look at this one coming out of Portland, yeah, this is a this is a no bueno right here, the soda ash delivery. This is a no bueno. Because it's twenty five dollars to the mile. It's only for ten point two K. But I'm driving four hundred miles for seven and a half hours. 
up to Colville from Portland, Oregon. Not worth. Let's check this can load. It is heavy cargo. Articulated trailer. Okay. And it's coming out of Spokane down to Boise. Okay. Almost at $26 a mile, even though it's 10000 The thing here is that I want to look at, again, is trip time and trip distance. This is 380 miles. Basically, if you look at your little pattern here, you notice there's a couple hairpin turns in here. I'm going to be honest. These here pair in turns is what drives this trip time up a little bit because you're having to go through either mountains, you know, gorges or valleys up in that neck of the woods. And it's going to, and with it being a heavy cargo, your truck is, your truck, depending on this, this is an international Lone Star Sleeper, high rise sleeper, 13 speed at 500 horsepower. She might struggle to get up hills with this heavy cargo. And then again, she might not because I honestly do not know what her layout's like. I don't know what her chassis build is. Is it a six by two or is it a six by four? If it's a six by four, then this is not a problem. This is good to go. I wish that, that they would give me information on this truck. I guess I can go in here. Nope. I don't think I can do it from here. Yeah, no, I can't do it from here, so. I thought maybe it would show me details, but it doesn't. <laughs> might be something they might want to add in eventually, especially for the quick job market. So basically, no go. Yes, yes, no go. Questionable. Now, you can take the questionable cargo and just know if it is a 6x2 chassis on this bad boy, you are going to struggle through a couple of those hairpins. So, I would play it safe and just choose one of these two. If I want to take heavy cargo, I'm going to select this job right here. It's about six hour in game time drive, 300 miles. Not, not too shabby, not too bad. With that fuel economy checked, if the, for some reason the game hands me a half a tank of gas, I know I can make it all the way. If I don't have that one point in fuel economy, I got to stop somewhere along the way and refuel the truck. And like I said, I'm refueling it with my own money. And that's something that you want to avoid. You know, a lot of people say fuel economy is, it is what it is. And the reason why they're saying that is because they have their own truck. At level five, you start doing what they call an owner operator. Where you'll buy your own truck, start making your own money. And you do a lot of what we call in the industry, uh, dropping hooks. You'll start doing a lot of them. Now, eventually you will be able to hire drivers, buy a second truck for the drivers, and they can passively earn you money over time. My one thing that I notice just in the single player, I don't know how it is online with the external markets and stuff. But I know for fact 
that you want to look for somebody's rating that's almost at a 1.0 or at least almost there, maybe a 0 0.09, 0 0.08 at the least. Because my run-ins with 0 0.05, 0 0.06, and 0 0.07 drivers is they tend to go backwards until they build the reputation up. So if you do not have an egg nest built up, a little money egg nest, yeah, it, it's going to hurt you in the long run. You know, maintenance is going to take its toll. The fuel for the driver is going to take its toll. And all that sort of deal. So my suggestion to beginners and novice players as far as I know, unlike 18 wheels of steel, there's really no like actual quote unquote contracts in the game that you can assign your drivers to. I know in 18 wheels of steel, if you did very well for a company, they try to buy you out. And you just haul it strictly for that company. Or they would buy out your truck and you could put a secondary truck on the contract and let one of your higher drivers take it back and forth and build up their reputation that way. So, and, and I kind of noticed that that's not really modeled into the game. I don't know if they're going to do that again or not. Because I know they had that in the past. I hope it is going to come to the game eventually. Where we can assign, you know, actual con contracted cargo to our drivers at least in the single player mode that would be pretty awesome pretty neat I think it will give it a little bit more in depth to the game as an owner operator which is what you ultimately become in this game as an owner operator but just to go back over, like I said, beginners, you want to start here in San Francisco because you have all these surrounding cities right here, even a uh, tuck tree. You'll even go there, maybe even up into Reno or Carson City. I've very rarely seen it go out that far from San Fran right at the start. I've seen it go down to Santa Maria and Oxnard and LA. I actually had one that actually brought me all the way down here to Oxnard. And I was just like, okay, that's almost like a 300 mile trip. I'm like, okay. And that's what you gave me for my quote unquote, very first quick load or quick job that I don't select the game selects it for you. I'm just like, okay. But yeah, so beginners start in San Fran. Novice players, I would say more than likely you don't have the DLC. As you can tell, I don't have Wyoming and Colorado yet. I'm hoping to get them soon. But I have the Pacific Northwest. I have New Mexico. I have Arizona. I think I think it was these four initially with the game. So beginners start in San Fran. Novice players can start in Phoenix, Las Vegas. I believe there is a 
garage in Reno. Or I, I wouldn't really do Salt Lake. Salt Lake is really out of the way for beginner and novice players. And then looking at job market, quit jobs. You guys will more likely get something down here. I like the, you know, the 800 to what's well, about maybe the 3,500 range. So if I was to take a look at these, if, if I started from level one, Strictly for a beginner, novice players, you're able to get through this with no problem because you want to build your experience to get the better jobs and to get your company rolling. But for beginners, you see the load here going from Yakima to Coeur d'Alene. 11 miles, $11 a mile, pays almost about $2,000 or $3,000. The way I look at it is, all right, it's a four and a half hour trip. Okay. I'm almost getting paid $1,000 an hour for this. Yes, please. Let me take this. I wouldn't even look at any others at this point. I wouldn't even look at this 12.7. Just because of how lucrative this one actually is. But if you don't have like any of these showing up. And it actually flags you at the 2500 marker. then I would look at the Seattle to Bellingham. Which is basically going to the Canadian border. Hauling empty pallets. $2,500. Almost $17.5 a mile a gallon. Mile a gallon. <laughs> so you're getting paid almost $17.50 7, per mile you go. And this is only a 123 mile run. For two hours. Two hours. This is almost. This is exactly. Almost. $1,500 for an hour and 15 minutes. I would. Jump all over this. Like no tomorrow. If this was the first thing I saw. That would be the first one I would go for. But I see here, there's one here for almost almost roughly close to the same. It's about $200 less. It goes to the Dallies of Oregon to Salem, Oregon. That one's 125 miles. And it's only a two hour and 20 minute drive. Hmm. Hmm. I could go either one of these. Knowing that I have these as a beginner, I can choose either one of these two. Take a look at this middle one. Uh, nope. 184 miles. Almost a four hour drop. No. As a beginner and novice, you want the quickest jobs possible to make the most money and the most experience you can in this game. Now, more advanced players. And actually, the drivers that do play this game that drove over the road for the living, and some of them were owner operators, by all means, you know how this works. This video is more entailed to people that are just coming into this game within the past, you know past couple days to about eight months 
that don't quite understand the the logistics part of it that are being like inspired by this game to maybe even go out and do this. They need to know some money sense. So it's always best to look for short distance, short trip time and high payout. And what kind of gives you the high payout is that dollar per mile. Like I said, this is 123. You're getting paid almost 17 and a half dollars for a two hour and 20 minute trip. And you're basically getting paid the same with the metal coils going from Dallas to Salem. It just depends on where you start. And that's basically it. it ultimately depends on where you start. Because I started in C- in S- Seattle. I basically have this whole Pacific Northwest. So basically for me to get anything going down here into California, Arizona, New Mexico... Utah, Nevada. This is this right here is going to be my best friend because I want to get to rank four. If I'm starting in the Pacific Northwest in the furthest northwest corner possible, because I was kind of challenging myself on this to see what I could do. And see if what I was seeing in this game is is what it's doing. Basically with the logistics working of the game. So, and it is doing what I thought it was doing. And basically, if you start in California, Vegas... California, Vegas, two points, one point here, and then you could go hazard, high value, because you're in a lot more condenser, in a condenser setting. You know, the miles from San Francisco to Los Angeles, I know is no more than 650. Actually, if I start in San Francisco, that gets me down to San Diego. That gets me over to the Utah border. Over there by St. George. And Vegas. And, you know, going through Vegas. It gets me almost to Phoenix. Rank two. Takes me into Kingman and all that. So, starting out. Exactly on the West Coast is what is preferred for beginners and novice players. I said anybody that just recently picked up the game up to about eight eight months to a year, depending on how much you play the game, is where we're looking at here. If you are an advanced player, and like I said, we're starting in the Pacific Northwest, the furthest from everything. Yeah, the long distance hauls is where we need to go. We just put one point of fuel economy at the very beginning. Basically, players that start in California or even Vegas, if you're a novice player in Vegas, Reno, you do not have to put a point in fuel economy until almost about level four. Because you'll start getting some of these 650 mile trips with either high value or hazardous cargoes and getting up some of the hills in the area. It's going to eat up your fuel. So probably around level, I want to say probably put a point in fuel economy for California and Nevada starts about level three. 
If you are starting in the Pacific Northwest, where it's very hilly, a lot of up and down valleys and gorges, you are wanting to put that fuel economy in off the first level. Just so that way you can get back and forth without worrying about your truck bogging down, using the extra fuel that needs to climb the hill, and stuff like that. And if you're start and if you do the rare start and you have the DLC for New Mexico, you basically don't have to put a point in fuel economy until uh, I want to say until like maybe level six. I haven't fully tested it out. I'm believing it's level six. I could be wrong if. If somebody wants to comment in the video below, you're more than welcome to. But this is my beginner guide to understanding the logistics working of ATS. This has been MW. Have a great day.